What is the best dual sport? Well, that's, that's a tricky question. Well, hi guys. Lance here from the Rocky Mountain Life Channel. I'm doing something a little out of the ordinary today. <laughs> In fact, something I have not done since I bought this bike. And that is ride on a Saturday. But I took the weekend off from my job because it's my wife's and my anniversary tomorrow. But she was kind enough and gracious enough to let me go out and do this today because I've got a friend of mine with me out there in front of me. His name's Justin. And this was pretty much the only day he could go. <laughs> so we went ahead and took advantage of it. He's riding a 2016 KTM EXW. And he's been riding longer than I am. He's better at it than I am, which is why he's in front. What is the best dual sport? Well, that's that's a tricky question for sir. Ouch! Tree branch to the top of the head. Um, what is the best dual sport? That's a tricky question because how do you answer best? How do you define it? It's like the old conversation about who's the greatest basketball player of all time. Well, how do you define greatest or best? To me, a dual sport is a bike that is road legal and is able to handle trails and off-roading. To me, that's a dual sport. So that's a pretty broad definition. I agree. So how do you determine what's the best? If somebody's trying to figure out what's the best dual sport? Well, what are you trying to do with that dual sport? How are you gonna use it? So let me see if I can put my opinion on it here. If you're going to use your bike like I use it, or 90 to 95% of it is off road, this sort of stuff, trails, or even single track. I don't do single track because I'm not good enough, <laughs> as you know. But if you're going to use it for that sort of thing and you just need it or want it to be road legal for those rare occasions that you have to ride it on a county road or something to get to your trails or you don't have a truck or trailer situation and you have to ride it from home then I would say in my opinion the best dual sport is going to be one of these beta RRS's which engine you get, it's up to you. But if you're gonna use your dual sport as a daily commuter, say you're a college student or something and you're wanting to ride it to campus and ride it home and maybe have a little room on the back for a, a bag, you can strap like a tail bag or something on it to help carry books or you know some small groceries or you know what I mean, something like that. If that's how you plan on using your bike, then I would not get a beta. I don't think that's what is playing into the strengths of this bike. If you want a bike that's mostly on the road, but goes off road once in a while on the weekends for entertainment, and just for sightseeing and relaxation, then I would get something else. Which one? Oh, I might look at like a KLX 300 or a CRF 300. They're not going to be as powerful as this, but they would be perfectly adequate for 
commuting around town. So that's always a trick. What is the best? Well, there isn't one true good answer. Some people think that what I have here, this Beta RRS, is a race bike. I would disagree. It is race capable. Take the mirrors off and you're pretty much good to go. But they do have a race edition, which has stiffer springs, not as plush. Doesn't have the Trailtech Voyager GPS unit. It's got the more traditional dirt bike uh, dash speedo odometer thing. Motor's the same, there's a 480 race edition, which has the same engine as this. But they come with a little bit different foot pegs and it's more race oriented. So to me, this is not a race bike, even though you could race it if you really wanted to. To me, this is more of a dual sport, a 90-10 dual sport, 90% dirt, 10% pavement. What about the other European brands, KTM, Husky? They don't have quite as much power, but I think they're probably close enough that most people aren't going to care a whole lot on the differences. But they come with more street-oriented tires. Yeah, you can swap them out. Most people do. And it makes it a good trail bike, of course. Especially the KTM. There's no linkage to hang up on logs or anything. Now, in Colorado, you can plate dirt bikes. As long as they've got headlights and taillights. Every state's got its own rules as far as what's legal. In Colorado, you can plate a two-stroke as long as it's got a headlight and a taillight and a mirror. So you put a mirror on it, make sure you use your hand signals of course when you're out on the public roads, but at that point that one's road legal. Other states might require turn signals. I don't know. Oh, I think it needs a horn too here. But like these betas, even the race editions come with horns. They come with headlights and taillights, and they come pre-wired for turn signals. So even if you buy a race edition, it's really easy and fairly inexpensive to get it road legal. One main reason why I didn't do that, because I almost got a 430 race edition that the dealership had when I was getting impatient for a bike, they didn't have any RRSs. I had to wait a couple more months for this one to come in. But, uh, you know, I, the only reason I really didn't get that race edition is I really wanted the Trail Tech Voyager GPS unit. And I really wanted a key for the ignition. Because I thought if I ever did want to take the bike into town and go get my hair cut, that it would be harder to steal <laughs> if it had a key rather than just walk up to it and push a button. I was afraid I'd have to like pull the battery or something, you know, to take it inside the store with me. By the way, we were here in a place called Phantom Creek. This is near Lake George, Colorado. And my friend Justin is way out in front of me. Partly because he's a much better rider. <laughs> and I also have to slow down a little bit when I'm trying to talk because that's considered multitasking. Riding and talking at the same time. And multitasking is not my strong suit.
but this is a beautiful place it's a shame they had the fire come through here a few years ago but that's normal these forests are meant to burn every so often it's what they've traditionally always done Well, we didn't go down, but I wondered about it. <laughs> this is a little bit rougher than I like. And then as soon as I gripe about it, it comes out into something that's nice and manageable again. That's why I try not to chicken out and turn around. So Justin's going to blow by me here in a second. He liked this climb, so he wants to do it again. So I'm leaning over here out of his way. I don't know how long it's been since he did much riding. <laughs> He's actually renting this bike. But he's a lot better rider than I am, even on a strange bike that he's never ridden before today. It's not set up for him. Now there are people who say, oh, trail bikes. Should you get a two-stroke or a four-stroke? That's personal preference if you ask me. I've always liked four-strokes. Spent most of my time riding them growing up and through most of my life. I don't really have anything specific against two strokes. Um, my biggest complaint with two strokes is I don't like the way they sound. I know there's going to be people who think I'm nuts, but I really don't like the way they sound. It's just harsh on my ears. I love this low throated, angry lion growl that the four strokes have. See, that's what I get for talking through rough and rocky uphill section. <laughs> 